This is a slightly edited version of an older video. Feel free to bail if you experience déjà vu. Hello and welcome to my shop. My name is George and I'm coming to you from Chelsea, Quebec. This is my first video of 2017, so Happy New Year to folks. Uh, it's my ninth video overall. If you're new to this channel, if this is the first time you're seeing me, uh, I'll just take a moment to mention that my strongest contribution to woodworking was in my very first video, the one on finger joint jigs. Um, so I'll encourage you to go take a look at that. If you're an existing subscriber, well, welcome back. You'll recognize today's fair as the uh, usual magazine format. So uh, there's going to be a shop tip. Uh, there's going to be my favorite tool of the month. Uh, a very modest construction article on making a shop tool. And um, a tool that I was able to slap together thanks to 3D printing. Very, very short segment uh, on that. So my shop tip of the month concerns the peanut butter jar and I'm sure just about all of you have discovered its uh, benefits. They're uh, great for storage, they are lightweight, they're clear so that you can see right away what's in them. They're not made of glass so they're virtually unbreakable and they have wide mouths so you can put large items in here and even reach in with your whole hand uh, to retrieve them. Um, perhaps uh, fewer of you have discovered that you can put a couple of screws through the top and screw these things to the underside of a shelf. So not only have them on top of the shelf, but also screw them on underneath and get even more storage space. Here's something that I think even fewer of you have thought to do. You can hot melt these things into a little train. And you might ask yourself, why would I want to do that? Well, let me take you to another part of the shop and uh, I'll show you. So I've got the good fortune of having high ceilings and open joists in the shop. And uh, what I've done over here, this is, first of all, this is a part of the shop where uh, I don't handle long pieces of material very often. So there's no worry about having to swing uh, a board end over end and shattering a light or bumping into these things. But what I have is one of my little trains, my little chains of uh, peanut butter jars with uh, the uppermost lid screwed to the uh, subfloor. And when I need something that's in these jars, uh, I can pull the whole thing down, open up the jar that I need to uh, retrieve the object, and then screw it back into the, into the uh, ceiling. Now, the uh, trick to making this work is to have all the lower jars relatively snug and the uppermost one just loosely screwed into the top. So when you undo it, it always comes down uh, with, the, with the whole chain. You don't have to get up on a ladder to restore it. Um, anyhow, this is not uh, the shop tip that I'm most proud of, uh, but maybe it'll have some resonance with somebody out there. So uh, enjoy. The one that I'm glad I bought is a set of setup blocks. The uh, setup blocks are metallic uh, blocks. Uh, I guess a machinist will recognize this as a, a one, two, three uh, because of its dimensions. So one inch by two inches by three inches. And uh, fractional sizes also in the set. So three quarters of an inch, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and then finally 116. And uh, what you can do with these uh, setup blocks is uh, stack them or use them um, individually uh, in order to mark off uh, any dimension from 
1 16th of an inch through to a little bit more than four and a half inches in 1 16th of an inch um, increments. So you can stack them and get 1 16th of an inch uh, resolution with them. So say for example you wanted to bore a hole three quarters of an inch uh, from uh, the edge and uh, the end. So I've got my three quarters of an inch setup block over here. I'll set up a fence with the uh, one, two, three and draw a line like this and then set another fence over here and there's my uh, location for a hole that's three quarters of an inch away from the edge and away from the end uh, of the board. Um, I use this every day. It came in a little plastic case and eventually I got tired of opening and closing the plastic case so I made a little stand for it using uh, the spalted maple that I talked about in an earlier video. This is the spalted maple that also had that uh, infestation of winged uh, ant. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty little thing. But yeah, that's it. I, I use it every day. I got tired of opening and closing the little plastic case. So I got rid of the plastic case and just made a little stand for fast access. To this thing. Uh, this one comes from Lee Valley. Rockler makes a similar thing. You can even make your own if you want to. If you're happy with uh, how you can um, use a table saw to cut rectangular blocks and get the dimensions right, then you can just make some wooden uh, examples of this and, and then use, use that. The tool that I'm glad I made got the inspiration for it. Well, I got the whole idea for it from uh, Serge and uh, what he showed is uh, basically this in uh, a slightly different version. This is a modification of it. What this is started life off as a, a block of maple and into this block of maple I cut eight different rabbits. So these rabbits they all have the same depth in this dimension, but they vary in how far away they are from the edge. So on one side, the rabbits are a sixteenth of an inch, then an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, and then finally a quarter. In other words, four rabbits starting at one sixteenth of an inch and growing by one sixteenth of an inch. Now uh, that brings me to one quarter of an inch. On the other side, I wanted the growth to be by an eighth of an inch. So I have a quarter already on one side, so on this side I have three eighths, one half, five eighths, and finally three quarters of an inch. It's hard counting in Imperial, isn't it? Um, and then I've gone and marked uh, the rabbits for what they are. So on this side, for instance, I'm not sure if you can read this, but it says one quarter of an inch. Now. You might be looking at this rabbit and saying either that's not a quarter of an inch or this guy is really small. Well, this isn't the one that's a quarter of an inch. It's this one that's a quarter of an inch, the one that's underneath. So in using this tool, what I do is uh, I find the distance that I want. Let's say it's a quarter of an inch and I lay it on the workpiece and then draw the line. And I end up with uh, a horrid line. And I end up with a line that's a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So the labels refer to the rabbits on the opposite uh, side. Um, this as well gets a lot of use. Now it's similar in some uses to the set that I bought, but there's uh, not perfect overlap between them. Uh, this one, for example, I'll pick up right away if, uh, let's say, for example, uh, I want to um, join two pieces of three-quarter inch uh, flat material uh, squarely at a, at a 90 degree angle. Well, I'm going to want to drive screws or uh, use nails half th that thickness in, right? So if this is three-quarters of an inch thick. I'll want to uh, drive these screws in three-eighths of an inch from the edge. So I pick up this, score a line, and I get a line three-eighths of an inch away from the edge. 
and that's where I should uh, drive my screws. So there is some overlap in the uses of these tools, but I would not get rid of either one. This month's uh, contribution from uh, 3D printing um, serves in the context of uh, doing some coping. Uh, I have a curved line over here and I'm trying to follow it, but I'm also kicking up sawdust uh, in front of the uh, blade uh, and I'm occluding the line. I, I can't see it. Now, anyone who's used a scroll saw knows that they have little puffers that are attached and they blow the sawdust away uh, from from the work area. The um, 3D printing, I put the 3D printing uh, to work um, in uh, making this. So the 3D printer made the shroud for a fan. Now I pulled this fan out of um, a graphics card, an old graphics card uh, that I don't use anymore uh, and I have it set up to uh, attach a, a 9 volt battery. And there it is, problem solved. I've got the little fan blowing the dust away as uh, I work and uh, follow the line. So, a quick and dirty little shop tool brought to you by 3D Printing. My video recommendation of the month is uh, anything by Charles Neal. So Charles Neal Woodworking, um, that's the name of his channel on uh, YouTube. Um, if you'd like a complete course on woodworking, then take a look at his pie safe. Uh, you probably don't want to build a pie safe. I understand that. But his um, his videos on building a pie safe, it's a 26 video series, each of them about one half hour long. And he takes you through all the steps involved in building the pie safe, but they generalize to building any sort of cabinetry. So he takes you through everything from uh, dimensioning raw lumber through to repairing blunders, uh, joinery, finishing, you name it. It's all there. I watched these videos back in 2011 and they still are among my favorite all-time YouTube videos. So Charles Neal Woodworking. You can see where to go right down here. So what's going to be coming off my bench in the next little while is a second version of this LED lamp. Uh, I put this lamp together a few years ago in the time since light emitting diodes emit more light, uh, uh, batteries have more capacity, power supplies have more versatility. Uh, there's good reason to build a second version that will produce stronger task lighting. So I'll uh, put these videos out uh, as a series, it might uh, run a few months uh, in length. Uh, but I'll leave nothing out. I'll talk about the electronics, I'll talk about the bent lamination, uh, I'll go through all the construction detail, details in making a second version of this LED lamp. Okay, so that's it for George's Woodshop for January 2017. Uh, let me remind you once again, celebrate your passion, but share it.